be a concrete example to make sure that these instructions uh, that I've written make sense. Uh, so 45, 45 is equal to uh, 3 squared times 5. That's the prime factorization of 45. 9 times 5 or 3 squared times 5. Now, so notice that 45 has um, two distinct prime factors. Two distinct uh, prime factors, namely 3 and 5. 3 occurs twice, but there's only two distinct prime factors. Now let's take a look at 225. Okay, it's a fairly simple example, but serves to illustrate, I hope. Uh, 225 would be equal to 3 squared times 5 squared, I think. Let's see, 9 times 25, yes. Okay, equals to 3 squared uh, times 5 squared. Okay, and again, these two numbers have the same number of distinct prime factors. Okay, uh, they both have two distinct uh, prime factors. 3, 5, and 3, 5. Now there's four primes here, but only two of them distinct. There's three primes here, but only two of them are distinct. That's the same spirit as these instructions. We're supposed to express 855 as the difference of two natural numbers such that each of the natural numbers has the same amount, the same quantity of distinct prime factors. Now, so I just picked out 855 here. It's an odd number. Now notice what we do right here. It's kind of cool how this works out. You picked the, the smallest prime factor, which is 7, that's not in this prime factorization. So notice 7 is the smallest odd prime factor that's not in the prime factorization of the number we're interested in, okay? And we subtract 1, you know, so 7 times something minus 6 times something is the something, right? Okay, but watch what happens here, okay? Um, uh, you get one extra prime factor right here, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4 prime factors, right? Now, uh, subtracting 1 from 7 loses the 7, but it gets replaced with 2, and since 7 is the smallest prime that is not in the factorization, all the rest of the stuff in 6 is, was already in the original prime factorization, okay? Now, if, you, if this is a little confusing, just notice that 6, 6 right here, um, is equal to 2 times 3, right? 6 is 2 times 3, 2.3. And you can see where the 2 and the 3 squared, 3 cubed, you see this was just 3 squared, right? Now you have 2 and 3 cubed right here, okay? But notice this is clearly equal to 855, which is what we're trying to do but you have the same number of prime factors. Here you have three, five, seven, and 19. That's four prime factors. Here you have two, three, five, and 19. Those are four prime factors. And notice that's all we were trying to do. Express any number, I just use 855 concretely, as the difference, as the difference, okay? The difference, okay? See, this is the difference right here, right? Minus sign means difference, okay? Now, so the, uh, we'll work it on out here. Now, it wasn't hardly even necessary to do this part right here, okay? You, you already know, but a lot of people like to just see the Hindu-Arabic form of the number. But we've already proved what we said to prove. And y'all, just to, uh, the general schema here on this problem is to do it like this. Uh, let all, all you have to do, if you have an odd natural number, even turns out to be easy. You guys can think about that if you want. But let's say you have an odd natural number. All you have to do is take the, the smallest prime factor that's not in the factorization of the number and write it like this. We'll call that P, okay? So we'll say PN, and P is the smallest prime factor that's not in the factorization of N. All right, so we'll write PN, okay? And then you do this, uh, P minus 1 times N. Uh, P minus 1, let me do that parenthetically, okay, now it's kind of easy to talk through it. If you think of P as the smallest prime factor that's not in the factorization of N, okay, so whatever the number of factors are in N, you're going to have one more, right, okay? Now right here, 
uh, you're going or so if say you had k factors in the n, uh, k prime factors in the n, you would have k plus one factors right here. Well, in a similar fashion, if p is odd, p minus one is going to be even, right? But it's going to keep all the other prime factors because it's less than the than the smallest prime that's not in the factorization. If that makes any sense. So you see, both of these expressions are going to have the same number of factors, uh, prime factors. P minus one times n is guaranteed to have the same number of factors as p times n because p is the smallest prime factor that's not in n. And that's kind of interesting abstractly, you know, but that's if, that, uh, just concretely that's what we did right up here. And it's easy to see, you know, when you have a concrete example that you have one, two, three, four prime factors here, and you have one, two, three, four prime. Just seeing it is easy. But when you, if you just started here, which I think was the Russian math Olympiad problem, it's kind of hard to say it, you know. But you know that these two numbers certainly equal to n, right? The difference, their difference is certainly equal to n. But this object is going to have exactly as many distinct prime factors as this object, just simply because we define p to be the smallest prime that's not in the factorization of n. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I like that one a lot.